Hey guys, Dee Dee Katrin here today. I am so excited to be joining you for Soul Journey 2018, put on by these fabulous Australian babes. Um, I am going to make for you a small, like miniature art journal cover. And I love putting together books and having like new little art journals that I can kind of just delve into and, and play with and have fun. And um, the cover is always my favorite part because each journal has a like a special meaning or a specific um, intention for them. And I've been doing a lot of soul searching lately, not, not like crazy off the wall, but kind of just reflection on myself. And, and if I have like a spiritual connection to anything or anyone or, or any religion. And, and I have finally, thankfully come to the conclusion that I love everything celestial. And I have a huge, like in my mind, I keep thinking, the world, the universe, the universe is so vast. And um, I follow NASA and a few other uh, places on Instagram and, and organizations and things like that are all, that are all about space and space exploration. And the pictures that they show and the, the amazing imagery, and it just is amazing. And I've always had this sort of connection with stars and moons and, and suns and things like that, planets. So anyway, so that's sort of the intention that I'm setting for this small journal is for me to just connect on a deeper level with um, some of those things that I have always been drawn to my entire life. So I should probably get to the tutorial part. I uh, started with a piece of cans and watercolor paper, and I did some mark making with a china marker in white. A china marker is a wax, very, very waxy crayon, and there are other things out there like resist crayons and things like that that will also work. I did a little mark making on the background, and so it was kind of white on white, and then I used it as a resist. So I put down some beautiful colors of Deco Art Media. Um, the fluid acrylics. I have a Payne's gray, a cerulean blue, and a cobalt teal. And I'm playing with my Umwell Studio squirt bottle and my heat gun and my paper and my paint. And I'm sort of just like letting it all sort of run into each other. And, and I'm using the water that was on my desk. So it already has sort of a fun blue tint to it from something that I had been working on previously. And so it's kind of grungy. It's not even clean water. And I'm just playing back and forth here with the with the paints and the fluidity and how um, how they kind of, you can get them to work sort of like watercolors while they're still wet. And then when they dry, they're permanent. So it's it's really fun. And these are the Deco Art Media ones. And I'm making sure my layer is dry now. And you can see in that top left-hand corner, I was really, really, really digging on the marks that came through uh, as, as a resist from that China marker. So I cut down my paper and I decided to make a mini journal instead of, I was going to make a large one when I first started, but then I thought sometimes I just need a small book to work in. So I cut down that paper and I'm folding it in half, increasing my spine. And my fold is not 100% accurate, but sometimes you got to go with it. Now I can see where my spine is and I'm going to get to work on the cover a little bit. I'm getting back out that cobalt teal deco art media and adding some um, some water to it to make it even more fluid. And then I'm getting some splatters around. And then also, like, I, I'm i not a very big paint waster. Like, I, I mean, you know, if you're not going to use it, you're not going to use it. But I always try to sort of sop up the excess that I have. And in this case, it just lent really well to the book, the page that I was already working on. So I, I pressed the paper down into the fluid paint there and kind of spread that cobalt teal color around a little bit. I am dipping now directly into the lid of the Payne's Gray and adding some dots. And they're sort of mimicking, in my mind, they're sort of mimicking this idea of stars and galaxies and like the flow of what is everything that's out there. I'm just using the back of a paintbrush to do this. And I am sort of uh, like, I'm being pretty random about it, but I'm also thinking uh, on the terms of like big dots next to small dots, kind of trying to spread that out a little bit. And I'm gonna heat these mostly dry. I was, I was shooting for a specific technique here and I overheated, so 
the paint is too dry, but what you'll see is I will squirt down onto the page and then try to wipe away the wet paint that would be in the middle of these dots where they weren't quite dry. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I overheated. I was already too dry. That's all right. It happens. It still looks really nice and we're, we're going to keep building on top of it anyways. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And then, so my fold wasn't perfect and it was a little bit irritating. So I just cut off the excess there and now, now all my edges have, um, are even. Oh, excuse me again. Hmm. Must be a little extra dust floating around after the after the wind yesterday. Um, I love masking tape, and I know a lot of people love masking tape, and it is such a fun, unique supply to use in your art journaling or your mixed media or your art in general because it has it's very like plasticky and it has a very it's super resist um um it has a lot of resist to anything that you put on top of it, which is really fun too, because your materials will all act differently on top. But the one reason I really love it is it's just different. It's grungy and it's sort of office supply-y and it, it just has a whole different look when you start adding it to your work. And I am, like I open the book and I close it and I open it and I close it because I am trying to keep in mind that it's going to be a cover and I won't see the back as much as the front. And I just want to be happy with both, but I do want to concentrate on the front cover. So from here on out, I'm kind of just work, going to work on the front. And I did put a piece of masking tape up the spine, and that is so that the water, the cover was nice and sturdy. It also adds like dimensionally or aesthetically to the project, but I really, I'm going to bind through the binding. I'm going to punch holes and do some, um, tying in and so I really wanted to make sure that I had a sturdy cover, a sturdy spine. And then I sewed in a square right around the front cover with my sewing machine. And then I've been holding on to this uh, little saying in these vintage this vintage book text for a couple, for a few weeks now and and I was really excited to get to use it on this book. It says I would give anything to travel calmly on through unusual atmospheres, wondering at rural joy. And it just, I mean, it just means like, to me, and I know that opinions, everyone has different opinions and different ideas about, about everything, even about the food we eat or how we should raise our children or what's going on with the neighbors or whatever. But, but to me, there's so much space out there and the universe is unlimited and it's so vast and uh, like there has to be to me there has to be life out there somewhere whatever type it may be and so like I have and I watch a lot of sci-fi and I always really love it and I just have this like connection with the idea that there is something else out there there has to be to me to me, there has to be the science and the um, mythology and everything that just combines in my head says, you know what? There's no other explanation. There's no other answer. So uh, I love that saying and I've been holding on to it. And someday, maybe in my dreams or maybe I don't even know when I no longer exist here, I will get to travel calmly through unusual atmospheres. I think it would be really exciting. So um, that might be a little too deep for you. And if it is, I apologize. And if it's not deep enough, well, you just send me a message and we'll talk more about extraterrestrials and the possibilities that are out there, okay? Because I would really love that. And this is probably the deepest that I've ever gotten in an art journal video with you. So thanks for sticking around if you're still here and hopefully it didn't creep you out too much. Um, the uh, a couple steps real quick before I get too far in the video, um, blabbering on, 
I have a little piece of craft paper with a scallop that I just did some doodling on with a black pen and a white Sharpie paint marker. And then um, I set that to the side and I'm splattering my white Sharpie paint marker all over my book. And in some of the areas you can see, I mentioned earlier with the, with the Payne's gray dots that I really wanted to spritz them and then wipe out the middle of them. I did achieve that with this Sharpie. So check out the close up photos for that. And uh, yeah, splatter that around and then I sew on that fabulous little scallop and I've got this, this stamp set. Um, uh, paper artsy? Let me double check. Yes, okay, so it's a paper artsy stamp collection, clean cushion stamps, and it is the Eclectica by Everything Art. So EEA01, and um, it, Paper Artsy is a UK-based company, and this is a really great grungy set. And this little stamp in the corner, well, it's not little, but this nice stamp in the corner really lent itself well to the project because it says experiment and exploration on it. So I did some stamping in some black soot archival ink. And then I bound my journal. I put in some pages and um, I put a closure on it. And so that's like a super boring part. I didn't film that, but I wanted to show you real quick what the journal looked like finished. And you can see the type of papers that are in it. It's a little junk journal, so it'll be really fun to work on. There are some jelly prints and some tags, some skinny pieces of paper, some big ones. There's even a pocket and some vintage text in there. I really love it, and I'm really excited to work in here. And um, I kept it in the blues and grays and sort of like, to me, spacey colors. And then the, the piece of ribbon that I used as the closure is a piece of May Arts ribbon just really long and then it hangs off the edge and I can tie it in a bow. So thanks so much for joining me. Here are some more close-up shots for you so you can see everything. Um, and I'm really glad that I was here with you today. I look forward to hearing from you and seeing if any of you create a little art journal based on this cover idea. And uh, thanks so much to Soul Journey this year for having me. It's really exciting. They're an Australian-based based group of girls. And um, yeah, thanks so much, guys. Feel free to subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you around. Thanks.